Hey brothers and sisters, I tried to make the confirmation better make better make way. The Lord, the King is coming. I tried to make it short. It still ended up being 24 minutes. So this is, I'm going to try again because this time, I'm not, not doing about that. I wanted to do um, a short video on songs of confirmation. Let's see how fast I can make this. I'm given on September 23rd a very detailed rapture dream. It happens to be the day of Revelation 12. I see the number 927. I think I've done videos about that. But the song of the day was Home by Chris Tomlin. Then um, when I told Kim Mosley about what I believed God was showing me about the rapture happening with the full moon, which I told her was the harvest moon. God gave her a Neil Neil Young, I almost said Neil Diamond, but a Neil Young song, which I did not know, called Harvest Moon. P please look at the lyrics. And then today, I think she, and I haven't even watched it yet. I mean, I've been, I, it was just a, it's like my last day on earth. My last day on earth to try to witness to a young man named Jacob who I, I we ended up giving him a gospel track after we talked with him. I, it, in fact, poor Fairy, I set her up because I'm like, I'm talking to him. We talk after, and, and we believe that he's not truly born of the Spirit. And she's like, no, I don't think, I was like, no, I don't think so either. I think he's just in a Christian family, and so he thinks he's a Christian because of it. Um, so I said, um, I'm going to call for him to come and you've got the gift of evangelism. So I'm going to the bathroom and you can, you can take over. <laughs> and she just made it short and sweet. She's like, are you born again? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Do you know what being, what being born again means? Yes. And so she was like, she gave him a, um, I, I have gospel tracks that I keep in my car and in my purse. And so she gave him the one it's called, are you good enough to go to heaven? You cannot go to heaven without being born of the Spirit. And so, uh, we're praying for Jacob, but, you know, a person who's born again, I mean, think about it. If he were born again, and he's got these two crazy born again uh, sisters at his table, just all we can do is talk about Jesus, he would have been talking, I mean, I've had, I've been plenty of places, I've had places where, servers who are born again have sat down and, <laughs> and had dinner with me and they're like i don't care what my boss thinks i'm gonna do it and i was like let's go you come and eat, share my meal with me let's pray you know it's been really wonderful i can't wait to see these people um but kim Mos um kim mosley um just gave me a text with the song moon dance and before I play it, I wanted to say thank you to Kim Young Go. He was like one of the first people that really helped me with feeling like I'm not crazy. This looks like it. And I pinned, on one of my videos, I pinned his comment uh, at the top so that you can read it. But I, you know, I, I put out a lot. I put out, I think I put out four, four videos yesterday and it's on one of those. I can't even remember if that was yesterday. I think it was. But anyway, I wanted to read to you. He he, he had read a book by George A. Well, uh, I don't think I wrote it down right. W-A-R. Rock. I think I missed. But anyway, it's called An Introduction to Tabernacles. We're talking about the Feast of Tabernacles being the rapture, being October 5th, full moon, harvest moon. Tomorrow, October 5th. He says in this book on the introduction to tabernacles is that trumpets is an introduction to tabernacles and that tabernacles is observed as three ordinances. Trumpets, atonement, and tabernacles, tabernacles is actually three in one, the Trinity. That's what um, Kim Young go says and I was like oh so then I started writing down what my thoughts were after reading over his comment again my thoughts are 
the great sign of the Revelation 12 announced the birth of the church. You know, I, I do agree that we were conceived at atonement, I, I mean at a Pentecost. I can see that, that we were conceived and now we are being birthed. Um, so it's, the great sign actually is a double announcement it's the announcement of the birth of the church like a birth announcement <laughs> and it's like a wedding announcement birth and wedding announcement with feast of trumpets is also called the feast of shouting right i think people i mean to me i've never really been hung up on what's going on in israel with the trumpets i just haven't because i believe that it, you know the jews they don't have any light to understand what's going on. They're under a strong delusion. Until the church leaves, they are not able to understand. So they don't know. <laughs> they don't know what they're doing. They don't know when they're celebrating. They don't know when they're blowing their trumpets. They're off. They're they're just off, off, off. And God's going to straighten them out. And he's going to straighten them out real soon. So I haven't been concerned with that, with the trumpets in Israel. The only trumpet that I'm concerned about is the one trumpet of the trumpet of God, which is where there will be a, uh, a shout from heaven with the trumpet of God, with the voice of the archangel, and Jesus is in the clouds. That's And the dead will rise first, and then we will follow, right? And I think that's also the verse where it ends, that little section. I think it's First Thessalonians 4, 15 through 19 or something. That's what I'm thinking. I may be wrong. At this point, I'm running on so little sleep. <laughs> Who knows what's going on? Um, thank you, God. <laughs> but that is the trumpet. The trumpet that we're paying attention to. Oh, I started to say, at the end of that section, I think that's where it says, comfort each other with these words. What are we doing? We're comforting each other. Why is it that the world is not being comforted by this? Even, you know, Christians. You, I, I like, as I recorded my video a little bit earlier, I'm outside. I decided to go to the front yard. I've got all these neighbors walking by. After I finished the video, I, I said to these this couple, they were coming home from playing tennis. I said, Jesus is coming. And I put my hands up like, Jesus is coming. <laughs> they're like, okay, but what if he doesn't come? Woo. I mean, it almost makes my skin crawl. That that could be the first response out of somebody's mouth when they hear that Jesus is coming. And they say they believe in Jesus. What if he doesn't come? What if he does? <laughs> but... I think my aunt, I don't even knew, I don't even know if I responded back. Oh, I know what I said to him when he he said I said Jesus is coming and he said, um, "What if he doesn't come?" And I said, and I think I did say, "What if he does?" I said, "He will give you what you want. If you don't want him to come, he's not going to take you." Is what I said. They're like, "Yeah, right. Okay, yeah, yeah. Crazy, crazy. That's a crazy lady. Okay." <laughs> I am crazy. I am crazy for you, Lord Jesus. So the so we got the birth of the church. We got the wedding announcement. So the announcement of the church and the wedding. The announcement. The great sign is the announcement. Um, then we have the atonement. The feast of atonement, Yom Kippur. Now God told me Yom Kippur rapture. Everybody's like, it didn't happen on Yom Kippur. But I'm like, maybe it did. <laughs> but the thing that interests me, which, which I know has happened in my own heart, and then today when I was at the Is This the End Bible study, the woman um, who's teaching it, she said, you know, really, over the last two weeks, God has just been working on me to, I mean, this is a woman who's been a believer who has actually believed that Jesus was coming in her lifetime, I think since she was eight years old. She said, even, you know, and I don't know, I think I, she's over 60. She said, even in this last, she said, in these last times, now she will not say a date and a time because, you know, she's talking to mostly a dead audience who could get offended that uh, she would assign a time.
But she said, you know, even as long as I've been walking with the Lord, over the last two weeks, he's still been showing me more and more things he wanted me to repent of. And I have to say, I'm only a 12-year-old Christian, but I have seen in the 14 days since he told me to no more, he didn't say stop drinking wine. He said, I, and this is why I know it's from God, because he, he keeps, I keep thinking this was exactly what he said. No more wine until the rapture. No more wine until the rapture. So the atonement, the Feast of Atonement, is like the final preparations for the wedding where we are presenting the pure, spotless bride by further repentance to where the bride is holy. Now, a lot of people... When you talk about holiness, they're like, oh, grace, grace. Well, yes, there is grace. But but you do have those verses that are, uh, you, you're you like, okay, I know I'm not holy. I'm only holy by by Jesus, right, by his blood. And, and as in 1 John it says, you know, if anyone says they're without sin, they are a liar. So we all still have sin. But when we see the movement, of the Holy Spirit in our lives during, you know, these last days to where we are getting cleaner and cleaner and cleaner um, through the Feast of Atonement, I think that is the final preparations for the wedding. It's like getting the bride to be holy. The epistles, if you look at the beginning of all of the epistles, they're all written to God's holy people, to the saints. We are the saints that are about to go marching in. And my dog is barking. Why is she barking? I don't know. Maybe she wants to make an announcement. The king is coming. The king is coming. Okay. Um, so then the actual tabernacles is entering into the wedding chamber to consummate the marriage. So he says that the three ordinances all fit together. To me, this makes perfect sense. So Kim Mosley was given the song Moon Dance. Lexi, come. Stop making noise. Come on. Because I want you to hear this song. And here we go. Well, it's a marvelous night for a moon I'm sorry. dance With the stars up in your eyes October skies. You know the leaves on the trees are falling to the sound of the breezes that blow. Good girl. Yeah, I'm trying to please to the calling, calling. of your heart strings that play soft and low. You know the night's magic seem to whisper. The still small voice. You know the song. This is making me think of Song of Solomon. The time is just right to run into Jesus' arms. Our hearts are waiting. We're never alone. He will never leave us or forsake us. Our dreams will come true. We already are his own. We were bought with a price. He's going to appear. His glorious appearing. I see a cross in there. Okay. Oh, look at the light. Yeah. Y'all, could that be what it's like lights, just lights everywhere as the souls rise up to heaven to meet him. Woo! All right. So I'm going to end it there. Uh, I thought that was a really good 
I mean, that to me was another confirmation. Kim Mosley and I have been greatly, greatly blessed um, by our, 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 our kindred spirit, I guess. Our, our, we were, we're really already citizens of heaven, right? So I guess we're already good, good friends in heaven, and we just found this out. Uh, so praise God, and uh, look up the other song, which is Harvest Moon by Neil Diamond, all right? As Kim... Kim Mosley got this is it <laughs> this is it I gotta look up those lyrics Kenny Loggins keep the fire keep the fire keep the fire keep it burning bright I love you bye